There's a new feature in the new 519 Linux kernel that you and I probably will never use, but cloud providers are salivating over this new feature. This is called Big TCP. How about we jump into it and discuss? This comes from Foronix. How about we read this and discuss what this means? Linux 519 networking brings big improvement with big TCP, pure Li-Fi, and more hardware. And this is what we're going to focus on. We're going to focus on the big TCP because when I first read this, I was like, mm, what is that? What? I never heard about this term before. But it's something, obviously, as always with the newest term, with this terminology, this is things that already exist, but just given a fancy name, a marketing name, so it's sexier. The networking subsystem updates have landed in the 519 kernel with big updates to the core networking core, as well as a lot of individual driver work this cycle both for wired and wireless there is a lot going on in the networking space as usual with linux running on everything from consumer network switches up through massive networking equipment by hyperscalers they go talking about obviously the um the cloud providers linux 519 brings big tcp support as a very exciting core innovation so what is that exactly so let's go ahead and read a little bit through this paragraph and then we're going to go off the screen and then discuss what that what this really means support for big tcp to overcome current limits and reduce tcp ip stack overhead with 200 gigabit and 400 gigabit uh, internet uh, networking to be specific being hit within data center so within the data center we talked about this in the data center itself when you have a database and you have your different services and regardless it doesn't have to be a database the microservices themselves talking to each other you can put as much bandwidth as possible because it's localized right and you want you can be as chatty as you want obviously within a certain extent and you can transfer as much of that as you want because the whole transfer is local so they are hitting these large uh, bandwidth 200 400 this is things we never seen i believe you can go up to 10 gigabit you can have 10 gigabit i believe i'm blanking what's his name linus linus stick tips like i believe he did a video where he installed 100 gigabit internet right but these are like these are crazy numbers. Big TCP is about going past the current 64 kilobyte TSEO GRO packet limit size for IPv6 traffic by the way of the IPv6 jumbo gram extension header. I'm going to talk about that a little bit. Enabling Big TCP across both send and receive systems can lead to huge throughput improvement or lower latencies for high network environments. This Big TCP support is prepared for the core network code as well as the VHS, MXL, MLX drivers and other stuff as well. There also there is a lot of also the multi TCP path uh, improvement, which is the this new protocol that supports demultiplexing your application so that works with multiple TCP connections, but it's presented as one. Fascinating stuff. Let's go. Let's go and discuss a little bit. What does this mean? So in order to discuss what big TCP really means, quick. I guess lesson on how the networking stack looks like when you let's say i want to send an http request http one and two stick to that is built on top of tcp right it means if i want to send a get request or a post request to upload a file right or send a certain api the string the set of strings that consist of the uh the version of the http protocol the method and the path the url the headers the body all of this becomes a string byte array and then this is placed into what we call a tcp segment the tcp segment will have a destination port where you want to go the default is port 443 in case of https 80 in case of uh, http unencrypted and then you put the source port 
right? Which is where, what is your application that is sending that? And the reason we put a source port so that the respond, when a response come, I know where to send this packet back or segment back to which application, which process exactly delivers that, right? So now the question is like how large the segment can get. And this really depends, right? So let's assume just that byte array goes into one segment and that that segment with the ports and other headers as well, this is called layer four, we're in layer four. The whole segment is slid into what we call the internet protocol packet, the IP packet. And there are two versions, IPv4 and IPv6. The IPv4 packet size, right, is, is placed, that whole test segment is placed in the, an IP packet, and then the IP has its own header, and the most important headers, really, to be honest, which are the IP address of the server that you're going to, and the source IP, which is your machine, or in case of NAT, it will be your router's public IP address, right? And that IP packet is then transferred into the NIC, and that is the responsibility of layer two, and it depends on the Wi-Fi or the Ethernet, it will go into something called a frame. And the frame here determines the size. And most of our devices, if you look in your maximum transmission yard or MTU, it's 1500 bytes. 1500 bytes for the UK people, right? And it's, it's too tiny. And in the internet, that's what we have. So whatever, whatever you send your HTTP request is determined, the segment size and the IP packet size is always determined by the MTU size, right? So if your MTU is 1500, which is the, that's the default internet. If you're sending something on the internet, it's always 1500, right? So you're gonna decrement the header size for the, the IP, right? And the decrement the TCP header size, minus 20 by 20 by, that's 40. Minus 40, that gives you what? One, four, 60 bytes as data, application data. That's a what? 1.5 kilobyte, that is tiny. So if you're sending a file, right that file if there's if it's large it has to be broken into 1.5 ish kilobyte per segment and then each segment is transferred by itself now of course we're not going to send one segment 1.5 and wait for an acknowledgement that's where uh, congestion control and flow control algorithm kicks in we can send as many segments as possible. And that's the problem. We don't want that, right? That's why cloud providers, they moved away from, because they control all their networking, they're not, their packets don't go off of the internet, right? If, when, the, when you talk in interconnected network in the data center with high bandwidth, they built all this networking stuff. So they have very high, large MTUs. I couldn't find out the actual numbers, but from this article, it seems that they're exceeding 64 kilobyte MTUs. They're going way beyond that. You might say, what is the size that we can get? It's like, what, what's the maximum I can go? Like, there is no current limit that I'm aware of, of the MTU size at that level, but there is a limit in IPv4 and IPv6. And this is this very clear bit size in the header says 16 bit. That's as far as you can go. That's two to the power 16. That's 64 kilobyte. That's it. So the, the entire Linux system was designed with what is called this SKB thing as a data structure that a packet could never be larger than 64 kilobyte. Obviously that was 20 years ago. Now data centers are building MTUs with way larger than 64 kilobyte, uh, you know, NICs in IC, which is network interface controllers. And they're going past that. It's fascinating. Obviously we don't see this. Thing. I don't work in a cloud company. Like, so I don't, I don't see this things, unfortunately. So if, if any of you 
have access to that and would share public information obviously i would would love to hear that because there's nothing on the internet you see some youtube video you know a googler would slip and talk about this oh we have like a, this much into you but that's pretty much it so people are exceeding those 64 kilobytes so what they did is if we have a limit in the ip stack that says hey, this is the largest ip packet then we have a problem we cannot put anything larger than 64 kilobyte even if we want to that's why ipv6 created this rfc i'm gonna put it on the screen it's called the jumbo frame again 22 years ago long time ago they, they designed this jumbo ipv6 extension so you can put in an extension and install what what is effectively the jumbo frame you can go as unlimited not unlimited i think four g four gigabyte frames has just nuts right it, it, that is the limit right so you can go up to that uh, and you can do that by putting zero as the size of the packet in the actual header but but put this jumbo frame header extension eight bytes and then go 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 crazy so with this now you can send a single segment tcp segment that is so large you can go now i don't know the limitation to this but you can go you can go 10k 20k 30k right you can send one segment with so much data so that you don't have to have multiple headers right to put multiple you don't have to work with multiple segments you can send one segment and the, we understand that my networking infrastructure will just deal with it so it's way better obviously to send one let's say for for simplicity one 10 megabit 10 megabit segment than a hundred right 1.5 kilobyte segment right obviously it's better why because you're sending one and you're gonna process it once so instead of having the middle routers because you're gonna have routers internally eventually and your routers better understand all this jumbo frame nonsense right so the, all these Linux extensions have to be installed in every single device because the packet that passes and had these new properties, they better understand the MTU. They better keep that jumbo frame, right? Hop by hop and keep it as large as possible. You don't want to uh, send a, a 10 megabit jumbo frame, right? And send your data only to hit a router that doesn't understand it and end up fragmenting the packet and sending 10 packets on the other end that just defeats the purpose you yeah. know but yeah this is fascinating and uh, unfortunately this is something we don't really get a glimpse on like how much how much are we getting performance wise right and how much how much data you transfer and i believe in aws when you're like uh when you're amazon kinesis and which is their Kafka offering, that the similar Kafka offering, there's data streaming in the gigabits and maybe terabits, right? Just streams of data. And I believe this is really useful. If I can send, right, the real state of sending a lot of data, right, in one segment, man. That is really powerful. I don't know, guys. This is just my opinion. What do you think? Do you think this will have value? Or do you think this is just uh, purely for the cloud providers? Obviously, anything cloud providers will do will benefit us asynchronously, if you will. Gonna see you in the next one. Goodbye.